Right, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to install Curdy board from Schluter in your tub surround. Make sure you are 100% waterproof. Okay, so in the building world today, we've got a lot of different materials available for building and waterproofing a shower. Uh, I believe in one of our previous videos we showed you how to use just regular drywall and use the curdy membrane, that orange mat, and cement that on the walls and create your seal for waterproofing. But in this video today we're going to show you a little different system because curdy makes its own wall panel. And this is half an inch thick, it's a polystyrene, it's got the waterproof membrane on it, and it just reduces everything down into one step. One of the benefits of this board is that you can actually use it to create your own custom niche and you can cut the hole after you've installed your wall while you're tiling to create that shelf right on the gravel line. We're not doing that in this particular project. We'll do that again some other time for you. Today we're just covering how to install it and the basics of it. So this stuff comes in three foot by five foot panels or four by eight foot sheets. I've double checked. It's available at both of the major building stores. The only downside is neither of them carry the Curdy Fix caulking. So if you download the instructions or look online for how to do this properly, you're going to be disappointed. They do not carry the caulking. I'm not exactly sure why. It's not exactly needed, but we'll leave that to Schluter to answer that question. So what I've done is I've just pre-cut my panel. I prefer to buy three 4 by 8 foot sheets. And because when I do the math, I have a five foot and then a three foot, a five foot and a three foot, and then control wall. So that's three panels, it's nice and simple. And I never have an issue. If I buy the three foot by five foot, I've gotta buy three sheets just for this wall, because usually this wall is six feet and change, and that's maddening. All right, now here's the deal. This board is cut at five feet, and my hole is a little bit bigger, and that's fine. They come with hardware, this wonderful little clip system, and that clip right there has got teeth in it, okay? And so what happens is, you put it on the polystyrene, you press it in, the screw goes in the middle, into the stud, and then it, you screw it until, until there's a depression, all right? And the way this works is that depression gets filled with cement and a waterproofing membrane layer, little two by two square, and that is the entire system. As soon as you put that on, this is built like a submarine. It can go 10 stories beneath the ocean's level and no water is going to get in there. Now these clips are supposed to be installed every 12 inches on the stud, every 16 inches apart. Your bathroom may or may not be framed like that exactly. Not to worry, it's a very rigid board so you can get away with a little bit of slack. Now, in our particular case, our framing is quite odd because we are back-to-back -back showers here. So I'm going to have a larger cavity. So I'm going to take advantage of this stud even though it's really quite close. Oh, love the Phillips screws. Because these boards have got these wonderful grid lines on them, and we're just doing a substrate, nothing has to be exactly perfect, it makes life really easy. I can actually put that board there, eyeball it, mark my spot. And I can just cut the whole board without any straight lines. All right. Breaks a lot like drywall. And it just has another membrane on the back that's very similar without the lines. So you just cut it and then you shave it. Now, if you're transporting these large sheets in your car, all you'd have to do is cut across the backside, snap it over, and you can make it half as thick to shove in your car. And then you open it up to install it. And you still have a continuous joint on the membrane, which means you still have a waterproof layer. So that's a very handy trick to have. Just for get started, we'll throw a couple of washers in. Go about a foot down. There we go. That'll lock that in place. Time for the next board. This is an awesome way to measure. We can just go over here, identify where the other board is. And then we go over here. All right, so we just eyeball this. Take an extra quarter off. You don't need to be flush to the ceiling with your wall board. All right, it's okay to have your board a little bit short as long as you're only doing a shower. Now, if you're sealing it all up to do a steam shower, you also have to waterproof the ceiling. At that point, it's not gonna be an issue. 
But for a standard shower, if your wall board's a little bit short, and I say go for it, make it ease of convenient. And look how easy that is to install. No fight. And put your clip right on the joint and compress the joint together. And go like that. Now when the last step, just as we're about to tile, we're going to mix up our non-modified cement. And we're going to do a curdy tape joint along these joints here. And we're going to cover all of our screws with little squares. And then that's the entire waterproofing system. So remember, all you need to know is you keep these things every 12 inches up and down the studs. Try to put them on every stud that you can find or 16 inches on center. Use these special things at the joints and a utility knife to cut and you can waterproof like a pro. So I found that one of the best secrets is get the two long walls on first, leave the control wall till last, crawl in here and then just measure off your finished wall board to the center of the plumbing fixture which oddly enough turns out to be 16. And because we use a laser level, all three will be the same. Now we want to measure from the top of the integrated tile flange. That is six and then 17. I want to get all my measurements at once and just have them handy. And that's 65. Now, all we're going to do is translate that information onto this board. So around here, that's my center line. That's my center line. Okay, so I'm at six inches. And I'm at six, 17 inches. And I am at 65 inches. Okay. So now I've got all my measurements. All I need to make my holes is a utility knife. Now if you like, you could use a hole saw. <laughs> Seems a little extreme, and I'll tell you why. Up here, we're gonna have a shower head, and it's just a half inch pipe coming through the wall, and the water starts here and goes down. So the likelihood that up here gets wet, very, very small. So you can cut yourself a nice, moderately sized hole. Just to, for convenience sake, okay? And there we go, that's for the shower head. Down here, I've got a shower control. Now, my cover plant pan is about five inch round, and it has its own gasket that seals up against the stone. So I'm not really that concerned about water getting in behind that part of the wall either. So I have a rectangle that I wanna cut that is about three by three inches. That's where I'm gonna start. Okay, and then for the tub spout, of course, same thing, it's just a half inch piece of copper. And so just to help make it simple, I'm gonna cut about a one inch hole. Gonna slide it all into place. Alrighty. Okay. Now the secret here to knowing where your wood is is you go down to your tub and you just look for the screws because that's not just attaching your tub, that's marking it. Alright? And that is how you know where your stud is. So I only have a screw here and here. I'm going to fill those two lines. I'm going to screw the outside edge as well. But because the old drywall is sticking out a little bit, I'm going to take a minute with my utility knife and cut that back before I close it up. And tighten it up till it dimples. There you go. So now all I have to do is go along, finish all of my screws every 12 and 16, and I have to cut a couple little strips to go beside the tub down to the floor. Oddly enough, that is the one part of the bathroom that seems to rot out the fastest. It's the most important. So make sure you keep some spare material around just for that position. And once we mix up the cement, we'll show you how to waterproof this. So here we are, we got all of our board installed now. It's all the clips are in. You can see where we use the clips on the joints so you can kill two birds with one stone. The only thing that's really left to do is to finish the waterproofing process 
by closing up these joints so that they're waterproof. Now, if you're not familiar with the Schluter product, this is their joint tape. It's kind of similar to doing drywall. Really, we're gonna just cover it over. Now, you need to use the right kind of cement. And so with anything that's waterproof, it means it resists water. I wanna use a product that is going to um, get harder and harder and harder over time the longer it stays wet. So since the water isn't gonna get absorbed into the wall, I use a non-modified cement, which is old fashioned for cement. <laughs> and I use that to make all these adhesions because I found that trying to use any other product, it just starts to peel off. So I know Schluter makes their own all set product now that's good for any application. That's rather expensive. You can just buy a regular boring non-modified cement and it'll save you a ton of money. Really simple. This stuff is actually, um, uh, it is a plastic, it's a woven cloth, but it's difficult to cut with a utility knife. So be really careful. You're actually better to use scissors when working with this kind of stuff. And of course, if you need to know how to mix cement, you can check out some of our other videos we've done on the Schluter waterproofing system and tile videos as well. Now, let's get into this. This is really kind of straightforward. I'm gonna actually demonstrate back here. Now I installed this board a little bit shy on purpose, okay, as a demonstration. This is not meant to be rocket science. Really, we're just gonna put this membrane up to the ceiling and we're gonna just physically measure it right down to where it overlaps right down to the top. And like I said, this stuff is a little tricky to cut. Yeah? So you might want to use some scissors. And the idea here is that we install this. We want to have it come down over top of the integrated tile flange. All right. So that our waterproofing goes right down and diverts everything right down to the tub deck and then into the tub if any water gets in behind the wall. So just as a note, if you're buying this stuff at the local building store and you don't want to spend a lot of money on tools, you can just use your regular four inch knife. Just apply it pretty liberally and don't try to squeeze it out when you're putting it on. Now Schluter does make its own tools so you can get all the thicknesses exactly correct. But honestly, as long as you're just a little liberal with this, you'll be just fine. Now you take your membrane cloth and you fold it over in half and just run it off the tub a couple of times. And that is a great way to put a seam on that cloth and it'll aid in the installation so you're not fighting with it the whole time. You put it into the corner. Then you can just place that in there. Bam. Just to reiterate, the waterproofing system operates because this product and this product both repel water. So water can't force itself behind that joint once that's dry. There's just not enough space for water to get a foothold. And they've tested this stuff out, something like four stories beneath the ocean floor and the amount of pressure it takes to force water through that joint. And since we're not in the ocean, we'll be fine. So the recommendation from Schluter, of course, is to have about a two inch overlay. This tape is four inches wide. And there we go, that's installed. Now that joint is completely waterproof. So butt joints are pretty much the same. Of course, you're gonna make a mess with this stuff, so don't worry about it, you can clean it up later. Again, you wanna have a two inch overlap over there. There we go. Okay. Now, as far as the cost of this product is concerned, I'll be honest with you. If you're using this product, it's because you want your bathroom to be waterproof, uh, hell or high water, okay? This is, this is not cheap product, and it really works. But to give you an idea, one roll of this at 16 feet is $30. Each one of these four by eight sheets is $100, $110. So you're looking at a five or $600 investment in materials alone just to waterproof and build your shower. Of course, if you're putting on expensive stone and you want it to last a long time, this is a great way to make a heavy use kind of shower last forever. The way that we finish the waterproofing of the system is everywhere where we have a penetration, we need to seal it up as well. And so we're gonna add the cement 
put these little squares over top of the hole and press them all tight. Now that area there has the same degree of waterproofing as the joint. Again, guaranteed walk away, never going to have an issue. Generally speaking, if you're a homeowner and you're buying this product at a building store, there's one thing you can't buy because they don't sell it. And that is the Curdy Fix. And it's an adhesive caulking. This is not it. Part of their warranty program requires you to use that at the base of the tub to seal the wallboard to the tub. Now they don't sell it at the hardware stores. Neither of the two major brands do. So you're already buying a product that you can't get a warranty for. And so you've got to be creative to create that seal. So what I have found, and we did this on a couple of projects earlier, we made a cedar cooler for my deck. We're using the LePage 2-in-1 seal and bond. This is made for interior use, so the fumes aren't very terrible. And you can use this to seal up your gap at the, at the tub. There's another way you can do this. You can also cheat and seal up these holes. <laughs> You're going to love this. Now, this doesn't dry very fast, so if you use it, you need to give it a couple hours to dry. But I'll give you an example of what happens here. One tube of caulking is $9. One sheet of this is $30 bucks plus cement and plus plus. Sealed. Waterproof. I don't know about you, but if I wasn't in a hurry, I would do this all day long. Come back and tile tomorrow. Because the design is made for a 2 inch overlap at 40 feet below sea level, since we're only waterproofing something in the back of a shower, you don't have to be all that concerned with the math. If you're even close, as long as that hole is covered, even by a quarter of an inch, I'm telling you right now, you're not going to have a problem. So don't get all paranoid about it. So since you don't have any Curdy Fix and you've got to find a creative way to solve this problem, you could use the membrane right over under the tub, or you can just take your caulking here. And this is of course a special material that'll bond to just about anything. And you can just run a nice thick bead along the bottom Okay, bam, and then just smooth it out with your thumb a little bit. Get a little pressure in there so you know it bonded all around the corners. You can do up the side as well. There we go, that's about all you need to know for waterproofing a shower with the Schluter System wallboard and the Curdy Strip. Uh, if you like this kind of video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do so. And if you have questions about why I did the way I did it, you know, I always ask that below. Uh, we answer those questions every single day. We're happy to do so. That's our forum for having these discussions, so use it.